Hey everybody, welcome to the latest RxM Cloud Native Short Take. And in this short take, we're going to take a look at the orchestration overview module from RxM. And we're going to uh, start off at the start. You can't use Kubernetes if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster available. So one of the first things that we do in this module is install Kubernetes. And so let's get right after it. So the real thing that we need to do is we need to install a container runtime, and then we need to install a tool for installing Kubernetes, and then we need to actually install Kubernetes. So there's a script up on the RxM GitHub org in the class files repo called kates.sh. So it's that easy, right? Spin up a node, run that script. You've got a Kubernetes cluster. It's a single node Kubernetes cluster, but it's a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm actually going to walk you through installing the Kubernetes system directly so that you can see what each of the steps is doing. So the first step is something similar to what I just showed you, but it's going to install Docker, right? So Docker has a get.docker.com URL. And when you dump that into a shell, it sends that shell the script that installs Docker. And the first thing it's going to do is update all your indexes in your package system. So apt get update. Next thing that it's going to do is it's going to um, make sure the appropriate transports are installed to pull down packages from download.docker.com. And then it adds the key for download.docker.com and then adds the search string to your package manager to look there for new packages. Then we update the package list. And that allows us to discover this Docker CE package, which is where we get Docker. And then we're going to install Docker CE. And so after a couple of seconds, we're going to get a welcome screen saying Docker is good to go and um, you're running version what have you. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the GPG for the Google Cloud packages and we're going to add that to our system. And this is going to allow us to install the Kubernetes installer called kubeadmin. OK, so we'll do that. Done. Next, we're going to add the um, apt Kubernetes IO uh, URL to our package manager's list of package sources. And once we've done that, we can actually update our package indexes and we will have the Kubernetes packages available to us. Right Now, some systems are going to have the Kubernetes packages already in their list of, of sources, but they may be old or dated or limited in the versions that you can get. So this is the horse's mouth. You're going right to the main distribution for Kubernetes, and you'll be able to get whatever version you want, and the latest and greatest and all that. And so the next thing that we're going to do is install kubeadm. If you've never run across kubeadm, it's the Kubernetes installer. And it's designed to install Kubernetes on a single machine, which is um, great because you can install a control plane node. Then you can go to another box and use kubeadm to install a worker node, and you can join them together by using kubeadm join. So you use a init to set up the master, and then join to add additional um, you know, control plane nodes or to ad add additional workers as you see fit. Next, I'm going to set up the cluster. So sudo got to be root to do a bunch of installation stuff. And then I'm going to kubeadm initialize a brand new cluster. So this runs the installer. When we run it, what is it doing? Well, it's actually just making sure that all of the containers that need to run to keep a Kubernetes system running are up and ready to go. And kubeadm sets all that stuff up. It tells us that everything's good and that we've got a cluster ready to go. And it tells us also exactly how to join additional nodes into this cluster should we want to. Now, I'm going to run these right from here because the installation process actually suggests just that. So we'll go ahead and do that. And boom, we now have access to our cluster, kubectl. Um, get pods and all of the namespaces, and we can see that there's a bunch of stuff working. Kubernetes depends on a container network interface plugin. And so what we need to do is we need to add support for networking. And there's lots of networking plugins that you can use, but most of them will allow you to just pull a, uh, a manifest down from the cloud and run it. And so we're going to kubectl apply this manifest to our cluster. And that's going to stand up all the resources necessary to get our network up and running. OK, so we're almost done. The last thing that we need to do is untaint the master node. And the terminology is control plane these days, but the taint still at this point is called master. And so that little minus at the end there, you see that guy? That's removing this taint. We want to be able to run pods, so we take that taint away, and we're good to go. All right, so last thing to do is maybe check our pods. Everybody's up and running. 
our cluster is good to go. And if I kubectl run the image engine x and call it web, that starts up a pod for me. And if I kubectl get pod in my own namespace and output wide, I can see that that guy is up and running. And then I can curl that guy and I can go ahead and hit him at his IP address. Boom, Nginx. All right, so that is starting up a Kubernetes cluster. It's one of the several things that you'll learn in the um, Kubernetes overview from RxM and then jump into the courses, Courseware Builder. You can build your own custom classes with the Courseware Builder. And if you go into the Kubernetes section, you're gonna find Kubernetes overview right here. And that's it. That is our cloud-native short take Kubernetes overview module.